Hey everyone, my name is Mike Dewey. I work at Moment and welcome to this course on mobile filmmaking. Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to use Moment lenses and how to get the most out of your mobile device. All right, so with that said, let's jump into things. If you're somebody that's gonna use Moment lenses, you're gonna to need to buy one of our cases. So you can see here on this phone, I have a Moment case on it. This is the iPhone 14 Pro. And you can see I have this mounting system here, which is how our Moment lens is attached to the phone. If you're interested in using something like the Moment Anamorphic, the fisheye lens, our telephoto lens, you're gonna need a case that has these mounting points on it in order to use those lenses. All right guys, so let's talk a little bit about the Moment lenses. Like everything with filmmaking, these are essentially tools to help you bring your vision to life. So on the iPhone 14 Pro here, the telephoto lens is on the top and the bottom is the standard lens. I do recommend for the most part, always using the standard lens if you're trying to get the highest quality possible. This is the 58 millimeter. I'm gonna screw it on right now and toss it into this mount. There I go. So one thing I do wanna mention, if you are using the Moment lenses with the native camera app here, the camera will go into this automatic macro mode if you attach a lot of the Moment lenses. So you see when I put my hand really close to the lens here, it thinks I'm trying to shoot a macro shot. In our case though, I just wanna shoot the normal shot on the 1X lens using this telephoto adapter. There's a little flower down here on the bottom left in yellow, and if I tap that, it will say, hey, don't automatically go into macro mode. I wanna shoot a telephoto shot. This is how I have it set up, and now I'm good to go. I won't have the issue anymore if I put my hand close again. You can see there's a cross through the flower. So make sure if you're shooting on the native app with the Moment lenses that you turn that feature off, otherwise it will drive you crazy, and you'll notice you won't be able to shoot with the Moment lenses. So adding this onto your lens is gonna give you about 58 millimeters or so, so you can tell you are gonna get a nice punch in, really good for portraits, really good for just zooming in and getting more detailed shots. The next lens we've got here is the fisheye lens. I think this lens is really cool because it gives you this really cool skate video-esque shot of like a fisheye look. If you really want to be right in the action, a lot of cinematographers will use ultra wide lenses to really make you feel like you're there and you're part of something. So up next we have the Moment Macro Lens. They did add macro capabilities to the recent iPhone 14. However, a lot of phones still don't have macro capabilities. This allows you to get really, really up close. If you're shooting something like flowers, if you're shooting insects, eyes, anything up close and you want these nice texture and detailed shots to kind of help elevate things and change up your focal lengths quite a bit. All right, so up next we have the Moment Wide. This is the very first lens that we actually made. Way back in the day, it's what blew us up. The Moment Wide lens is great because it adapts onto your main lens, which as I said before, is the highest quality lens, and it allows you to get that wider focal length of around 18 millimeters. All right, so up next we have the Moment Anamorphic lens. This is probably one of my favorite lenses that we make. This is incredible because it gives you that really cool anamorphic look that otherwise would be really expensive on bigger cameras right in your phone, which is really neat. So if you've ever gone to a movie and you notice how wide the screen is, it might be a little bit shorter, but it's a lot wider as you're viewing it. You'll also see it on YouTube videos sometimes where people have these black bars on the top and bottom of the frame and it makes the image look a little bit more cinematic. Well, that's basically, in some cases, faking the anamorphic look. So when you put this adapter on, it's actually gonna make the focal length of whatever you're shooting at a little bit wider, but it's also gonna squeeze your frame a little bit. And the byproduct of doing that with the lens is it gives you this really incredible bokeh that you'll see in a lot of anamorphic lenses. And then the most evident thing that you'll notice is what are called flares. And that's basically those blue streaks that you see across the screen when there's like flashlights in the shot or headlights. You'll probably notice it in a ton of your favorite TV shows and movies. That look is all coming from an anamorphic lens. Now at Moment we sell one that makes a blue flare and we also sell one that makes a gold flare. So it's a different stylized look depending on what you're going for. But like I said, it's really cool that you can shoot that just in your phone because to be able to do that on a bigger camera is pretty expensive. And this is one of the quickest run and gun ways I've seen to do it. If you want a subtle look and you don't want it to be too overly stylized, then maybe 1.33X is better for you. If you do want it to be very stylized and you want the frame to be a little bit shorter and maybe a little bit wider and really look cinematic, then maybe the 1.5X is right for you. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is head over and download the Moment Pro Camera app. It does cost a little bit of money, but it's gonna allow you to access the full controls of the phone to get the best quality possible. All right, so I have the anamorphic adapter attached. You'll see here though, I have the image and I'm looking at it. When I don't have the lens selected, everything looks squeezed. So you can see how strange it looks like here. And if you're shooting in the native app, that's what it's gonna look like. The benefit to using the Pro Camera app is that I can actually come in here and say, hey, 
I'm using the 1.33X and now it looks correct. You can even see the little black bars in the top and bottom of the frame. I'm using the Blue Flare 1.33X. There's also the option in here for the 1.5X. So that is adjusting the different lenses in the Pro Camera app. All right, so coming over to the right here, there's this little slider. And this right here is the power of being able to shoot in the Pro Camera app, in addition to being able to select the lens, obviously, but this is where all the manual controls come into play. So this first one here is shutter speed, and this is essentially how much light is being let into the camera. And then with ISO, the next setting here, the lower the ISO, typically the more dynamic range you have, the better contrast, the image looks the best. So keep that in mind when you're starting to jack that number up. The higher it goes, typically the more noise there is. The next option here is the exposure compensation, which is essentially like, hey, I know you're doing some auto stuff, but I kind of like an overexposed look. I want it to look brighter. Whatever the default is, like exposure to zero, it's just too dark for me. I want it to be brighter. So you could come in here and say, I want the image to look brighter overall. Or you can say, hey, it looks way too bright. I like a moody kind of look. So essentially you can just adjust that based on your personal preference. If you think that whatever the camera's doing is too dark or too light, come in here and adjust that. So the next one here, if we move along, is for focusing. If I tap this, I can actually do manual focusing and you'll see these little green dots appear on the screen. That's called focus peaking. It's just helping you find what's in focus. The last thing is white balance. I had mine by default on auto white balance. Using auto white balance is gonna make a lot of work for yourself in post because and then you gotta adjust the color on one and then it looks a little too warm and then a little too cool and you're gonna go back and forth. The easiest way is just to come in here and you're like, I just want it to look like this the entire time. You could come in here and say, hey, I think this looks good at 5,000 Kelvin or 6,000 Kelvin, or I want it to be a little bit cooler. Let's set it to 4,000. It's gonna look the same throughout the entire shot. Very powerful app and we're really excited about it and pairs super well with the Moment lenses. This is a cut down segment from a much larger course I did on mobile filmmaking that's about an hour long. So if you're interested in learning more about mobile filmmaking, definitely go check that out, link in the description.